And so number four from paper two of the 2015 new hire. There we go. Area between curves. Your standard area question for nine marks. Seems a little bit excessive having these four curves here with these horrible equations full of fractions. But you know what to do, so you should be able to cope with it because it's a calculator paper after all. What's the first part? Find the x coordinate of the point of intersection with the graphs with the equation y equals f of x and y equals g of x. In other words, what's this point here? And it mentions the whole thing was symmetrical. Well, at that point of intersection, f of x will equal g of x. Which means putting those in. 1 quarter of x squared minus a half of x plus 3 should equal 1 quarter of x squared, that's handy, minus 3 upon 2x plus 5. Now, that was the first mark for equating the two of them to find the point of intersection, carrying out that substitution. And quite handily, these fractions don't matter all now because they're going to disappear. That's going to come over and just leave you an x. That's going to come over and subtract and leave you a 2, and there it's done. So it wasn't that bad. If you differentiated fx, you could find the x-coordinate of the minimum turning point. If you differentiated g of x, you could find the x-coordinate of the minimum turning point there. And then employing the axis of symmetry, I think that was at 1 and that was at 3, employing the fact that this has got an axis of symmetry, that you could then say that means that they intersect at 2. Seems a lot, a lot of extra work. But if those equations had been worse, so that solving this was quite awkward, you know that the derivatives are going to be of a degree less. You're going to have simpler equations to work with, and you only need to equate them to 0 to find the turning points. So that wasn't too bad a way of doing it either. Although in this case it was much faster, because these terms just cancelled out. Right, so what's the second bit? And so, part B, what's the area then of this shape? And of course, the critical thing is, not the critical thing, a helpful feature is, it's meant to be symmetrical. So you don't need to work out both parts of this, which you would normally do when you've got two different equations for the top and also different equations for the bottom, as it turns out, because the two parts are the same. So you just need to work out one half and double it. And you know that this point of intersection is in the axis, and you've just calculated that's two. The other way would be to work out the two of them and add them together. That would also be correct. You've just incurred a time penalty. If you did do that, the axis simply tells you this would be at four then. So if I just work out the area on the left, or you could say the total area is 2 times and keep the factor of 2 in. But just to save writing that down, I'll just say area on the left will be, it'll be the integral. If you do that, that's worth a mark, just for knowing to integrate. The limits are 0 to 2, because you calculated that. That's worth a mark. Now, for some reason, they're throwing marks at you. And then, you have to make sure you put this bit down properly, or else you'll have to justify your answer at the end if it turns out negative. Is the top take away the bottom? That'll be f of x take away h of x. I think I'll just put them in brackets to keep them carefully. Correct. So I've got a quarter of x squared minus a half of x plus 3 minus, and h is 3 eighths, now it's getting a bit nasty, of x squared minus 9 upon 4 of x, but also plus 3, sorted itself out a bit, and all of that times dx. So if you do top take away bottom, you get a mark. Now you'll have to tidy that up though. You would get the answer if you proceeded to integrate all six of those terms, but there's no need you can tidy it. Now you can use your calculator to do those fractions if you like. They're eighths, two eighths, take away three eighths would be negative one eighth of x squared. You have to make them both quarters. So that's negative two quarters, but that would be plus nine. So that'll be plus 7 quarters of x. And the 3 minus the 3 disappears. So that's what you're going to integrate. There's no marks for that. The next mark comes, you thought that would have been one of the marks there. The next mark comes when you actually carry out the integration. They could have left one of them to put there instead. Still, it doesn't matter. 
So that's add 1 to the power, divide by the power, so that's 1 over 24x cubed. Plus, add 1 to the power, divide by the power, 7 over 8x squared, to be evaluated from 0 to 2. That's a mark. Then, as usual, substituting in the values is worth a mark, so that you've got putting 2 in for x, negative 1 upon 24 times 2 cubed, plus 7 upon 8 times 2 squared, and just tidy that up with a aesthetic bracket, minus, and even in the marking scheme, they've just put a zero there. So I think I'll just put a zero there. Substituting in is worth a mark. The valuation is worth a mark. But quite honestly, you would probably just press the buttons in your calculator. But I'll just work this out. It's not that bad, is it? That's 8. 8 over 24. That's 1 over 3. So that's negative a third. That's 4 cancels it down to 2 plus 7 up in 2. So the answer is going to be sixths. That's 21 minus 2 makes it 19 upon 6 units squared. That's a mark. But of course, that was only half of it. So the final mark then is for saying the total area. The total area, it's getting a bit messy this, will be 2 times 19 upon 6. So that would be 19 upon 3 square units. Or any other mixed number, or perhaps even decimal equivalent. Well, actually, there's no mention in the marking scheme of a decimal equivalent. You would probably just stop at that anyway.